And yeah, this is the other end of the dolly here. The, uh, this is where the tank goes. It'll hold the 250 cubic. This is the bottom of the dolly, of course. You're not looking at the top. But uh, this is where the, the tank mounts in this area. Uh, on the opposite side, of course. And uh, there's not much to see in this movie other than my hand wiggling around. These are, this is inch and three sixteenths cold rolled round. And uh, I uh, drilled it for the cotter pin. I chamfered the end by hand. And I uh, counterbored those just slightly with a slightly bigger drill bit so the cotter pin has a nice area to, to sit in. And, uh, you know, this is where the, uh, this is in primer so far. And let me show you the entire dolly. Yeah, and this is what the entire dolly looks like, viewed from the bottom. And uh, I built it out of, uh, I think it's 3 eighths by 2 and a half angle. Except this bar, this bar right here, this crossbar is half by 2 and a half. It's actually hot dip galvanized. So I had to grind all the crap to galvanized off before I could weld it. Reason being, because there's an offset, of course, I, I wanted to put the big wheels over here. Uh, this is where the 8-inch wheels go, at the back here. And uh, that's how it's welded. It's kind of an odd configuration. I needed to move these, I needed to have this axle be up 3 sixteenths higher than the rear of the frame. I don't know if this will focus or not, but uh, let me see if I can get in there. Yeah, see, it clears the level of the back of the frame by 3 sixteenths, and uh, uh, looks like that. And uh, got some splatter on there, but hey, you know. Um, see if we can focus. Yeah, got a little splatter, but hey, whatever. So it clears it both sides by 3 sixteenths, the thickness of that piece of flat bar, and uh, Here's a close-up of the uh, ends of the shaft. I know you want to see that. Let's see if I can get in there for you. Yeah, it's a little shaky here today. I've already dropped the dip back down into this dolly, so I know that the bolt holes are going to align. And uh, and I can show you that I welded the casters down, which is probably not a clever idea, but I did it anyway. Uh, reason being, I would have liked to have bolted them down, but, uh, and I could have drilled and tapped the holes, but what that would have meant, that where the dip pack sits on the inside of the dolly, I would have had to, which would be there, or here, you know, all the way around, I would have had to have uh, cut the bolts really, really short, and uh, they wouldn't have, I wouldn't have got that last possibly the last sixteenth of an inch, which I really wanted to have. So I, uh, so I, uh, welded the casters down. That's how that works. A little shaky here, you know? Something less than ideal. I'm on my knees here out on the ground. Hands are shaking and whatever. But, you know, whatever. This is how the, uh, casters steer, and I got these Pitman arms or whatever they're called, you know, those things. It goes like that, and that goes like that. So that's how it steers, more or less. Okay, hold on, let me put the other arm on for you. Okay, yeah, this is how it steers, and uh, obviously I don't have all the, the lock nuts. That, that's 5 sixteenths, that's 3 eighths, this one's half. This one over here is 7 sixteenths, but it's a grade 8. Aight, yeah. And uh, it's all half by one and a half flat bar, this part here. This is uh, one by three sixteenths. Likewise, that uh, arm or whatever it's called, Pittman arm or whatever, you know. And uh, yeah, this is how it'll work. And this is going to be cut short, okay. The handle comes down on the opposite side of the lower center of your frame. It'll be going downward because we're looking at the bottom of the dolly. The general idea being that this will be able to lower or swing like yay with some effort so that I can uh, have the handle down but not have the handle come crashing to the floor. And uh, although I could have it on the floor if I want, if I want to.
pull it up onto like a rollback wrecker or from the handle or whatever. That'll be workable. And uh, with the bottle on it. And uh, 250 cubic foot bottle, okay. And uh, yeah, this is how it steers. And here's the, uh, the real clever stops I got. This is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this just happened by chance. I'm not. I'm. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to bullcrap you. That bolt head hits on this caster here and keeps it from going over to where this comes. When this becomes straight, when that bar becomes in the same line with this bar, the steering will lock up solid, and you, and I'd have to crawl under the dolly and hit it with a hammer to get it come back straight. And this way, I turn it this way. That bolt head doesn't hit that caster frame, but what does happen is this square washer-like thing that I got welded on hits that steering arm. So that all happened by chance, which is okay. Okay, so that stops this from coming uh, in the same. This is about a, the relationship of that arm to this arm is about maybe 10 or 12 degrees. And likewise on the opposite side, maybe it's 14 degrees, you know, whatever it is, okay? So yeah, it keeps it from it keeps the steering from locking up solid. If I swing it over, if it was able to swing over just a little further this way, for example, this arm and that arm would be exactly straight. Uh, if I put a flat bar on the sides of them, at, at which point the steering would lock up solid. I wouldn't be able to get it out of the turn again. So that'd be a no good thing. And uh, yeah, so this is how it works. And uh, this is uh, three eighths. I think it's three eighths. Yeah, it's two, five sixteenths or three eighths by uh, two and a half, whatever it is. It's ha it's 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 adequate for the job, okay? And uh, it's let's put it this way: it's way better than what the factory had. So uh, yeah, after it's greased, it w it'll no longer squeak, and uh, everybody will be much happier. I know you guys will be, and I'll and I will be too. And uh, I can tell you that getting this arm. This arm back on all three of these studs at the same time is kind of a real trick. But uh, this long, straight, single piece arm, that's the one I'm referring to. It took me about five minutes and I was worried that I warped stuff when I uh, welded the casters down. <sighs> that was a close one. But anyway, yeah, it does go on and I didn't have to file out the holes, so that's a big plus. And, uh, Originally, I thought I might have to make this hole here be oval shaped crosswise, but that turned out to be not the case. So that's that's also a plus. And uh, where this bolt bears, the threads end right here where you can see them. They don't end further down in because I wanted the flat part of the bolt, the uh, unthreaded part, to be bearing on the steel in all situations here and at both ends and on here likewise on this pivot so that's why things are the way they are and I got some bolts with apparently that are apparently cut short and uh, in what might be considered odd positions reason being I wanted them to bear as much as possible uh, steel to steel as opposed to steel hole to to a threaded part of the bolt I didn't want the threaded part of the bolts uh, acting as the pivots so that's the uh, that's the dip back dolly so far the steering end and uh, thanks for stopping in today and uh, and uh, I'll show you the dolly when it's done okay alrighty bye bye